Good morning, everybody out there in the business objects world. I hope you're doing well this morning. Uh, Nathan Croak and Pauline Lancaster here to talk about disaster recovery for SAP business objects. Uh, super important topic that I really feel actually doesn't get a ton of airtime uh, with all of the end user concerns, but exceptionally important. As I mentioned, uh, Nathan Crook, uh, Senior Director here um, at 360 Suite. I'm joined today by the always lovely Pauline Lancaster, Senior Pre-Sales Solution Engineer. Say hello to the people, Pauline. Hi, everyone. Yes. And together, we are going to talk through the topic du jour. Uh, before we get started, a couple of housekeeping notes that if you've joined us before, you're very familiar with. Uh, there is a GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, there are a couple of areas to keep open and utilize during the process. So uh, there's a questions area. Please ask questions as we go along. We want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, love, there are some poll questions as we move through here that'll be interactive. Um, maybe you've got answers that aren't in those. Make sure you add them here. Otherwise, just ask general questions and we'll make sure to get to those before we get to end. Uh, additionally, there is a PDF of today's presentation at the bottom uh, under handouts that you can download and uh, keep for posterity's sake to present up and make sure you can find budget if you don't have 360 suite in around disaster recovery. Uh, and then finally, um, we are going to be sending out a recording of today's presentation. Um, and we've got a very, very short uh, exit survey at the very end, might be 10 seconds. Uh, make sure you let us know how we're doing. Uh, so without further ado, I want to jump over. Of course, if you have been paying attention to 360 Suite, you're familiar that there are a number of areas, a number of modules that make up the 360 Suite. I'm not going to dive in deep on any of these today, but in specific, uh, we are going to be focusing in on incremental backup, disaster recovery, promotion, comparison, uh, as it relates to 360 Plus and delivering disaster recovery to the organization. So, what's on today's agenda? Why use 360 Suite for SAP Business Objects Disaster Recovery? Automate the synchronization of SAP Business Objects production to a DR site. Uh, create an SAP Business Objects environment that is an exact copy of an another environment. And we're going to dive into a use case, uh, which funny enough, we've got an addendum, one, one that's fresh this morning. <laughs> we, we had to uh, roll back our 360 suite uh, business objects landscape. So we'll, we'll talk about that and uh, dig into these topics. Look forward to it. Uh, appreciate you guys showing up. We'll um, dive into that topic now. Okay, so the first uh, topic is why use 360 Suite for a business object's disaster recovery. Um, so if you are not familiar if you, uh, with the traditional backup um, that's needed, the backup and restore, so you need to have a backup of your file store, so your FRS input and output. You need to have a backup of your CMS database um, in that those, you'd like those to be in sync. Um, and then you also need your cluster key information. If you don't have those three things, you're not going to be able to recover. Um, I will admit that one time I, that cluster key information is a key that you put in when you install business objects. If you, it's a password. If you don't record that, um, you won't be able to restore um, from the backup. Um, I made that mistake once. Um, so just to let you know, it's not always, no, not always a simple task. Um, so these are actually the steps. Uh, let me, let's see. Oops, sorry, I lost my mouse here. So these are actually the steps. If you were to do the traditional restore once you have those backups, I'm not going to review these in detail, but um, just to let you know, this is um, this you'll find this on an SAP site. Um, and the item number five that I have highlighted that actually involves updating your CMS database, um, which actually SAP doesn't recommend. So even the steps that you have to follow to restore your business object environment aren't they're not all. Um, recommended by SAP. So if you did, ha you know, have an issue 
they wouldn't necessarily support it if you, you know, if you encounter an issue by doing something that they don't um, recommend doing. Um, so these steps are very, um, you, know, you have to follow those. It, it does require someone that has um, some experience. Um, it, it's definitely challenging if it's, it's your first time trying to restore. Um, it involves a DBA, and you, typically a, a system administrator, as well as the business objects administrator. So lots of people involved in this to, to get that restored. Okay. Today's gonna first us, uh, poll. Yes, indeed, we've got it. All right. So now, in the event of a disaster recovery situation, how would you restore your business objects environment? So we've got a couple of answers there. Of course, the I don't know is probably the one I hope nobody picks, <laughs> but it's real. Um, and so, yeah, we've got 20 seconds. So 360 plus, we've got some customers out there. I know I see you guys. Um, Roy, how are you doing this morning? Um, restore my FRS and CMS from a backup. VM snapshots. Uh -oh, we've got some I don't know is coming in. And no others. All right. Give it just another moment or two while people are wrapping up their voting. Kind of looks like we've got quorum. All right, I'm going to close this and uh, share the results. And quite interesting, the the biggest uh, chunk are those doing the traditional style backup, restore from CMS, FRS from a backup. 25% VM snapshot, 15% holding strong out there on 360 plus and 13% in the I don't know category. All right, so I'm gonna hide this and then we've got a follow-up uh, question here that is tangential. If you have a business objects disaster recovery strategy, when was the last time you tested it? So we've got less than six months, six months to one year, more than a year, never tested or the dreaded we don't have a disaster recovery strategy playing with fire and oh excellent everybody's on top of this jumping in oh and we've got a good smattering across the different categories here too all right looks ooh, still got people coming in just the last couple of seconds, I'm gonna wrap this poll up. All right, perfect. And can't say you didn't learn something today. Less than six months, only 17%, good on you guys. Uh, six months to one year, or at least I hope that's good. <laughs> hope it worked. Uh, six months to one year, 19%, uh, more than a year, 21%, never tested is actually the biggest category at 30 percent um hmm, we'll dive deeper into that later uh we don't have a dr strategy 13 percent. well you came to the right webinar today we can help you there all right so now that we're all a little bit smarter let's learn some more here on how we help people Okay, so why use 360 Suite for business objects disaster recovery? Um, so some of the one of the reasons is the complexity of SAP business objects um, to restore it. In in the past, if you were a user of 6.5, it was very easy just to move the database all over. It contained everything: your reports, all your your security, everything was in that that CMS database. It was very easy to move to another environment. It didn't have all of those. Naming, you know, named based on the source system where you installed it, so you didn't have to change anything. Um, but with XI, as I believe with XI, everything changed um, and made it a lot more complicated. Um, so steps to do a traditional restore, we showed those earlier. Um, SAP doesn't even support some of them. The one that you have to actually update your um, repository information. It's also very difficult to easily automate it, um, and that's because of the pointers to the source system and um, 
you know, there's some, some limitations to a traditional restore. Um, it's all or nothing. So if you need to restore just um, a set of universes or a particular folder, you have to restore everything just to get that folder back. Um, so those are a few of the reasons why it's, it's um, an improvement to use the 360 suite for um, disaster recovery. So this is kind of a, a nice little diagram on how the process for 360 plus can help uh, in your landscape. So you can see along the right with 360 plus you know, no more than two gigabytes needed in order to um, to house the storage for 360 plus. Things popping up on my computer. Here we go. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. No. Feel free. Feel free. Um, okay. Was there anything okay. else that you wanted to pull out of this diagram for people? Yeah. So the so yeah, there's a database that's needed that keeps track of the versions of your backups, and then you have a network location. Typically, it's a NAS or a SAN where you store your backups so that if, if in the event you need to um, restore those, you can restore to any environment. Um, the automatic syncing is, is something that you can, it's a daily process. So originally, um, 360 plus, we had backups, and it was meant just to restore, do a, you know, a single folder restore, or maybe a user restore. Um, but over time, we had customers saying, I need to, I want to have this automated. I want to be able to sync my entire environment. Um, SAP was actually one of our first customers who requested this, and so our development team enhanced the solution that allowed it to be uh, more automated. Um, so you have your scheduled daily backups. So you back up all of your content with 360 plus, um, and that's always incremental. So it's typically after you have your full backup, it's, it's uh, pretty quick to, to run the incremental. Um, then you have a scheduled daily restore backup job. So what that is doing is you can restore from one CMS to another. You have that regularly run. So after the backup runs, that runs. So any of the new content um, gets essentially promoted to the DR site. Um, and that gives you the ability to easily switch to your DR site. So if you do have a disaster, if you're syncing your environment, all it is is a switch of a, of a URL, maybe a load balancer to point to that DR site um, and you have a regularly available environment um, to switch over to. So just to show you, this is what the scheduling, and we're going to go into the, the solution, the tool itself, so that you can see what it looks like, but you can schedule your uh, frequency. So we have a number of customers that, that use 360 for their um, DR syncing on a daily basis. So they set their frequency. Normally, that's once a day. In the evening, they, they schedule their backup, and then they do the replication um, for always for the previous day, so it's always keeping their environment in sync. Okay, and there are a couple other, you may not have DR. A lot of you said you don't have a DR strategy. Well, it may be that you don't really have a requirement, um, a COOP strategy or a requirement to have a DR site um, readily available, but there's a lot of other reasons why you may need to copy an environment, basically replicate an environment. So. Um, some customers, you know, they've, they've set up, they have production, and they want to be able to um, sync up with, with their QA environment. So when they're doing testing, it, it mirrors their production. This is a great way to use. You can use 360 Plus as a one-time thing. Maybe you don't need it to be regularly synced, but um, maybe periodically, you know, once a month you could do that. Um, so that's certainly a use for that. Um, doing an upgrade. So a lot of you are moving from 4.1 to 4.2 or moving um, to, to other versions, SP three to SP7, um, doing an upgrade. If you're not doing an in-place upgrade, you need to move all that content from the old environment to the new. Um, you can basically use 360 Plus to do that. Um, so it's essentially essentially running through that DR um, strategy. And then another use case is migrations. Um, so customers that are moving to the cloud, they need to move all their content. Um, definitely 360 Suite has helped with that. Um, Servers, if you're moving to a different data center, you're setting up new servers and you want to move all your business objects con to the, to the new servers, that's another use for that as well. So lots of other uses in addition to DR uh, disaster recovery as well. All right, so now we've got our third 
whole. And so, like I mentioned, we're going to take it just a bit deeper. So on that last restore that you had to uh, deliver on, was it successful? Um, and if so, what was the time frame? Less than six hours, one to two days, more than two days, um, not successful, or maybe you've never had a disaster. which I hope you're in that category. Uh, but the reality is, is typically it's more of a, a matter of time than it is a, a matter of whether you will or won't. All right, the numbers are still coming in. Just a few more seconds and I'll close the poll and share with everybody. Good job, actually great participation today, by the way. All right, so we're gonna bring these up. And look at that. A, a majority of you have not had a disaster or not tried to restore, I guess, one of those two. Only 4% successful. Wow. Um, or rather weren't successful, which is good. More than two days, 4%. Yeah, one to two days is, uh, competing for well second place as within the time frame and less than six hours is a majority so that's good that's really good of those that were less than six hours how many of you are on a traditional um backup i'm interested to uh ah okay so one chiming in less than six hours but does not include validation that's an interesting one um because yeah, once you've set things up, you got to make sure that every, um, all the contents the same, all the reports are working, etc. So that I can see that. All right, interesting. Hide those results. Okay, so now we're going to move into the demo. So I'll show you how um, the traditional backup can be accomplished with 360. Let me. Okay, so here we are. This is uh, 360 Suite. So this is our web platform. If, if you have the legacy platform, you may not have seen this um, this, uh, this UI, but um, this is where our new um, web platform is, and this is where the, you can set up um, your DR strategy. Uh, so this is what traditional, most of our customers that are doing this um, DR, so they've got their backup tasks. So they schedule a daily backup. Um, so I'll show you what our daily backup looks like. Um, so you can basically schedule it at whatever frequency you want. So most customers will schedule it on a nightly basis. Um, in the evening, um, it'll run every day. And you select the content that you want to backup. So all of your reports, all your universes, all your user content, um, everything. Everything gets backed up, all your security, access levels, uh, you specify the number of backups, so that's per object. So over time, you can this can be changed. This is our default, but if you want to maintain more backups, you can. Um, and then these are all the user options, so inboxes, personal folders, and then you can choose to back up all your instances and your recurring instances as well, um, if needed. You can set up notifications so you're notified um, in the event you know that the backup doesn't run. Um, so we have that this run on a daily basis, um, and we can then see over time every day what's been backed up. Um, so I'll show you what one of the logs looks like. Okay. My environment's all slow this morning. Sorry about that. Um, Probably have other people doing demos, let's see. Um, so with our logs, I'll be able to see in the log itself what was backed up from the previous day. Uh, the log will actually give me a summary of all the content that was backed up, and that's actually what's going to get restored um, to the next environment. Um, taking so long. Um, so I won't, I might have to switch to my, um, let me see 
Okay. Sorry, I might have to bring up my <laughs> plan B. Um, plan B, well, there's nobody on the line that knows anything about going to plan B. Uh, good old <laughs> technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Huh. Okay, so I'm just gonna, here we go. So here's, um, here's what our log looks like showing what was backed up. And there's a, I click on show summary. Here, this is my recording of the, uh, in the event, the demo doesn't work. Um, so yeah, this will show the summary um, of what was backed up from, from the previous day. So here you see, it'll tell me everything that was backed up. So basically I had 726 um, Webby reports that changed, um, in, there were nine instances. So this is what was backed up um, last night. And that is what, if I were scheduling a daily restore, that is what would be uh, replicated to my DR site. And I'll show you how that gets replicated. Um, okay. So this is, okay. So if I go to tasks, um, there are rollback tasks. Okay. And I can create a task that basically is replicating one environment to another. Um, so we we have several customers that use this. Some have connectivity to their DR site, and so it's just a regular, um, uh, you know, just basically one CMS to another CMS. However, if you don't have connectivity to your other site, there are other strategies. Um, some customers have used um, OS copy, OS level copies um, to do that. And so there's de definitely other ways to do that. Um, so this is what the, um, the schedule is. So on a daily basis, um, our customers will have a, a rollback that runs and it will store any of the content from the previous day um, to the DR site. So every day they're syncing the environment. So in the event that they do have disaster, they need to roll back, um, it's available, it's already available um, within the time frame. And we'll give you some, some timings as far as how long that takes um, to do. So I'm replicating this from another environment. You can see, you can actually um, deselect any of the options um, that you want. Maybe you don't wanna move your server groups from one to another, because those are gonna be specific to the environment. So I can choose not to, not to replicate those, um, but everything can be, be replicated. Um, I can get notifications and then I've got my, my confirmation. Um, so that's essentially set that, have it running, and then the event you need to, you can easily switch to your um, your GR site. Okay, so I will switch back now. All right, so <clears throat> you're lucky actually, everybody here today, you have the first view of, um, of the blog that was put together around this particular use case. So this is a very large medical center and wanted to give you some sense of how these uh, aspects are working within a, uh, a, a, a fairly large environment. So approximately 300 gigs in the FRS, over 20,000 reports, over 100,000 instances, 1,900 users, and essentially with 360 Suite, uh, the full backup was about 13 hours. Full restore was 53 hours. And then daily backups are actually one hour. Daily restore is one hour. So there's a couple of things to pull out of this. Uh, one is that the way the uh, application is working, the first time it does the backup, it's going to gather everything out in the landscape. So uh, you know, it's going to take kind of as long as it's going to take with regard to your metrics, you know, the number of reports, users, instances, all of that type of information will give us a sense of how long it should be uh, taking in your landscape. Uh, and the same fr from a restore aspect. The restore is dependent upon a couple of things like network and uh, size, complexity, all of those aspects come into play. Uh, but the way that it goes forward after the first time, it's done in a delta mode. And so you're only picking up things that change every day. 
Uh, you're not having to do a full scan, which makes this solution much more performant in terms of being able to deliver on uh, your daily backup, making sure that you're not leaving any content behind, uh, making sure you know the way that this also is working is is putting an object level buyer file around every single object in your landscape, and so you can use a scalpel uh, to be able to pull back you know just one uh, folder, one report, one user, uh, a full group of users, a full uh, folder of reports or the entire landscape, uh, hence the reason we're talking about disaster recovery today. And then daily restores, you can see uh, once you've made that first transition, it's mirroring the time on the Delta backup for the Delta restore as well. So you, it's easy to keep your environments in sync and be able to cut over and actively test and deliver on uh, getting certification for the disaster recovery if that's a part of any type of compliance efforts that you need to uh that you've been pushing away <laughs> from business objects um you can actually uh, certify the application uh, from that standpoint and really uh, we've got a ton of other topics we can talk about with regard to compliance as well uh but that that one in particular is a is a very big piece of things like gdpr and SOX compliance and hipaa compliance and basically all the major compliance uh, efforts that you'll see out there so um with that said there is a chat box at the bottom right hand corner of your go to webinar control panel uh, there will be a link posted there in just a moment uh, to give you a uh, a more detailed get get access to the blog with more details around the uh, the medical center use case and uh, basically uh, access to all the information we're very active on the content side of things so you know dig around find stuff it's focused on business objects people uh, for you guys uh, to leverage so please uh, feel free to do so all right so that pretty well wraps the major content for today. Uh, I think that, that we've got one last poll to bring to you. And that is, how can we help? So if you're here looking to dig further into a, a disaster recovery solution and you'd like to understand, uh, please let us know if you're good. That's awesome. We appreciate you stopping by and listening. Um, definitely, uh, this helps us help you. So make sure that you fill this in and give us a good sense of how to support you out there in the business objects world. And I'll let this stay up just so everybody's got a chance to um, tick things off. So uh, of you out there, I'm interested who actually got out and attended uh, either the business, the BI and analytics in Dallas two weeks ago and came by the booth and saw us, or who was at BI and HANA last week uh, that happened to, uh, to see what, uh, to, to see the, the team out in Vegas, or did we not have anyone out there? Because I bring this up because we actually pulled together a wrap up on content, uh, not just from 360 Suite, but from key customer uh, presentations that we felt were, you know, worth uh, putting out into the business objects ecosystem. So, you know, on that blog link, you will be able to uh, go out and actually uh, uh, see the wrap up that we have out there. And Pauline, do you have that link? Uh, for some reason, it hasn't been posted into the uh, chat yet. Um, the link for the, the blog. The blog. Uh, yeah. Should, yeah. So yeah, it's there. It's uh, yeah, it's there. It um, it, maybe you don't see it. Cause maybe uh, it. Yeah. So it's there. It's also in the attachment in the handout. It's on one of the. Um, the pages of the PDF as well. So either okay. either place you can get to keeping, it. Um, keeping me in the dark. Maybe, I see. Sorry, maybe you're setting. So yeah. I, I have a question. Someone was asking for a re wanted to see a restore with 360 plus, and I can certainly show that um, if if uh, that's of interest. Um, so we weren't showing it because the restore that we were referring to today was more um, 
you know, a full restore, but I can certainly show how you can quickly restore a folder, a user um, from this <laughs> I can show that if there's an interest around that. Um, yeah. Let me go ahead and make sure my environment's back up. I don't know what was going on before. Um, okay. Um, Okay, so if you have a need to restore, so um, in the event that that something, something, someone changed something, someone removed something, I mean, I get calls. Unfortunately, I get calls very frequently where somebody something actually gets deleted, someone logs into the wrong environment, starts removing users. Um, it happens. Um, you know, it's, we're all we're all human. Things happen. So um, it this will give you an easy way to restore if needed. Um, so I will show you what that looks like. Um, so taking a look at, so I can um, right click on any report so all my content's backed up. So you see I have um, five different backups of my, this Webby report um, and I can restore any of them that I want. I go to restore. Um, the nice thing is I can also compare before I do the restore. So right now you can compare Webby reports um, in the next release that's coming out in the next two weeks, you'll also be able to compare universes before you restore. Um, it'll show you anything that's different. So before you do that restore, if there's anything different in the data provider, um, it'll be highlighted. Looks like I didn't pick one that had any differences, um, but it would show me any differences. It would show different colors if there were any differences um, in the variables that would show differences and then anything in the report structure. So in the header or tables, additional columns that would be highlighted. Um, but yeah, just to, to restore, all I need to do is um, right click and I can, see, I'll go back to the 11th, restore that. Um, I can also restore any instances, um, instances or, or just the recurring instances. So if I, if I have those, um, that'll launch in the background and then that should be restored. Um, I should get a um, message saying that that's been, been restored. Um, so it's as simple as that for, for a one-off, a folder, a universe, a report. Um, we also have a recycle bin if needed. Um, but yeah, the topic today was more of a full-blown, you need to do the whole environment. Um, but yeah, it's certainly flexible enough to do an individual um, content as well. Absolutely, same COID, same security, um, all the instances, schedules, just like it never left the landscape. And so, you know, I can't tell you how many times we've gotten these very lengthy thank you emails <laughs> because it was somebody really important uh, that accidentally uh, deleted their content or a whole group of users or, I mean, you name it, frankly. Um, hey, uh, Kim. Hello, Kim. Uh, she's got a question. So does this compare functionality allow for user access, basically a non-admin view for customers to have this option? Yes. So you can give access to 360. Um, we have pretty granular level rights. Um, so I can, yeah, I can, I can get with you, Kim, um, but you can give them access to just certain things. So they wouldn't be able to bulk up to anything, but they could view that compare if, if you gave them access they would need to be have access to a restore from a backup um, to have that compare. Um, but yeah, you could certainly give very specific rights in 360 if you wanted to. Right. Um, so, you know, out of the box, when you plug this in, it um, allows anybody in the business objects landscape the same rights that they have within business objects. From there, you can then go into 360 and open up, like she said, different uh, slices of functionality or different aspects of the 360 suite to the greater landscape. And actually, this is really uh, how a, a ton of our customers take their, their ROI to the next level. Um, because frankly, <clears throat> we're talking disaster recovery today. Generally, that's a pretty small audience, right? In Inside of your business objects world, um, like she mentioned, there might be three or four people that would be involved in that in that process. Um, but the reality is, is that for, for the broader sense of 360 Suite, there's a ton of functionality that can be given in a self-service manner to help take things off of the plate of all those of, of the people managing 
the platform in order to you know make things more self-service uh give uh federated functionality out to the users and make them more powerful. Um, but at the same time, you've got a full uh, insurance policy with 360 plus, you know, if for some reason they ever did something that you don't like, you've got the power, <laughs> take it away or uh, roll back, you know, from a, from something that's a challenge. So uh, another yeah, question. Sure. Sorry, yeah, that's what I was getting to. Sorry, Nathan. Um, yeah, so somebody asked, how can you restore all personal folders if someone um, removes an AD group by mistake? Yeah, so um, we actually had a customer recently that had this issue. But yeah, the, with the rollback, the, the same, it, it can be a one-time um, rollback. Um, it might not need to be replicated from another environment, but you could um, just come in here and uh, go to my users folders. So this would be um, if I selected user groups, then I can also restore all their content as well. So I could uncheck everything else. So maybe I don't want to, you know, I don't have any need to restore this other content. So I uncheck all of that. Um, so I'm just restoring the users, their personal folders, their content. Um, so you can definitely do that um, as well. Um, so we've had a number of customers that have had issues. I was working with a customer recently where they were moving from AD to LDAP. Um, and in the process, a lot of users change, names changed. Um, so in the old system, they had one name, the new system, they had another name. So all of a sudden they log in and they, they were able to log in, but their content's gone because it was under the old name. So luckily they had the backup with 360. They were able to restore the, the old user and move their content to the new user. Um, so scenarios like that happen, unfortunately, pretty, pretty all the time. Often. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, 360 definitely helps with, with those scenarios. So here's an interesting one. Do we need to have a similar server set up in the DR site to perform the restore from an existing prod server to DR environment via 360? Yes, yeah. So you would have your, your DR site would have business objects installed. Um, typically, you want it to be the same version as your production site, um, and you you would probably also want 360 installed there as well. Um, so right. yeah, that that's typically yeah typically it's an exact exact um, install and then you you do the the replication. Yeah, exactly. You don't you know you, you you're not doing a proper DR if it's all on the same server because ultimately the, <laughs> not that that's always the problem, but if the server goes down, you don't want to be dependent upon that. So yes, absolutely. Um, and the rest are kind of clarifications to that, which perfect, we've answered. All right, so questions have slowed down. You've got one last shot. Um, you know, we've kind of gone over our time. I hope this has been valuable. It seems like we've had good um, engagement with everyone and we really appreciate all of your time. And uh, thank you so much for spending uh, a little chunk of your morning, this Tuesday morning, with Pauline and I. Um, yeah, thank you, everyone. I, I believe that's it. Thank you so much. Have a great day, and we look forward to you uh, joining us for the next topic. Cheers. Bye. Bye.